Have you ever wondered what happens to two criminals when they claim to have uncovered a genie in a bottle? Everyone wants to get rich quick, but it turns out a genie might cause more problems than it solves. This is a story of Marlon Merlin, a crook that is in over his head, and Ernie Badurndurn, a follower who has a good heart but often doesn't know any better. It all started with a scheme to get some money fast for their boss. The pressure was on and time was running out. Grave digging for jewelry seemed like their best option on a rainy, moonlit night. All right, let's get this over with. Well, what are we doing again? You idiot. Listen up and listen close. We go in, dig up a few graves, crack open some coffins, and get out with the goods. You got that, Ernie? Um, sure, Marv. But isn't this wrong? I've never dug up no dead people before. What if we get haunted by a ghost or something? Nothing's gonna happen to us. We gotta pay the boss somehow. First one's right over here. Grab that shovel and lend me a hand. Okay, Marv. Hey, Marv. I think I found something good. Huh? What is it? Looks like some sort of flower vase or something. I can't really tell just yet. Well, stop lollygagging and dig it out, you halfwit. Oh, it's just an old bottle, is all. Nothing too fancy. Doesn't even look valuable. But it's gold, Marv. No, it ain't. It's brass. How dumb can you be? Hey, what'd you do that for? What the? What's happening, Marv? I don't know. Get down, you idiot. Marv? Where are you? Marv? Marv? That's not I, however, no. They call me Janessa the Fair. It is a pleasure to be at your service. Ghost! I knew this place was haunted. This is a bad idea from the start. Marv, where are you? <coughs> I'm over here. We're busted. Run, Ernie. <laughs> Look at these two imbeciles. I almost feel sympathy for them. Nevertheless, they are mine. What? Welcome back, boys. Look, I don't know who you are, but you better stop following us right quick, lady. How did we end up back here anyway? Marvin Merlin and Ernie Badurndurn, the pleasure is mine once again. Allow me to formally introduce myself. My name is Jenny the Genie of the Yellow Gin. cordially at your service. Listen here, I don't know what you think you're doing, but you can't prove anything. Ernie and I here just lost a family heirloom, and we're trying to find it, is all. Wait a minute. How did you know our full names? It was speculation. All I had to do was take a good look at both of you, and I knew everything about you. It's the nature of any genie. Genie? Yeah, sure. A genie? Like the one out of Aladdin that lives in a bottle? If you're a genie, Ernie here's a unicorn, and I'm a dragon. Very well. Your wish is my command. Wait, what? You two believe me now? What the? You both have freed me from the desolate chamber. I lay there for centuries awaiting my release. Completely isolated within that brass enclosure. You mean that shiny gold bottle we dug up? Precisely, dim-witted one. It was brass. Because you and your friend here released me, I am forever in your debt. Name anything and consider it yours. Anything? Although Marvin and Ernie thought they struck gold with their new friend, Things took an unexpected turn. 
Anything. Okay. I wish for 50 gallons of ice cream. Stop right there. Yeah, stop right there, you filthy criminals. What's going on here? What's the deal with all this ice cream? You two know anything about this? No, sir. No, but do you want some ice cream? We got plenty. No, why are all these graves dug up? We were looking for a lost family heirloom is all. And we dug around and found a genie in a bottle. Where, where'd she go? Shut your hole, Ernie. Genie in a bottle, yeah, right. It's true, though. Are you sure, Ernie? That's her. Hey, what What do you mean? I don't hear anything. They cannot hear me. Only you two can see and hear the truth. It is the nature of a genie to stay secretive towards the outside world. Oh, great. So, can you get us out of here or what? Certainly. Cover your ears, gentlemen. What in the world? Whoa, our car! Oh my god! I wish Ernie and I were back at the hideout. At the hideout, Marvin and Ernie figured out that they might be able to use the genie to pay their boss back, and then some. Bathtubs? Why did we land in bathtubs? The sergeant called you both filthy criminals, so I thought that the two of you could use a bath. Digging up graves isn't the cleanest job out there. Sure isn't. Fetch me a towel, Ernie. Here you go. Ooh, all right. That's better. Anywho, Jenny, right? You said we could wish for anything? Yes, with varying limitations. Like what? Well, long story short, my previous owners cursed me and prevented me from wishing a few things upon people. I cannot wish for gold, for it is far too risky. I cannot wish for the permanent disappearance of people, for it is unethical. And finally, I cannot wish for bald men to grow hair again. Um... Okay. Let's get back on track here. We didn't get any of the jewels or heirlooms from the graveyard. So, you gotta help us make more money. We could become some of the richest people in New York off of this one heist. As long as you do not directly wish for gold, I am able to achieve what you seek. You'd better be able to. You're the reason that we got caught by those officers. We didn't bring back any profit because of it. I will not be insulted by the likes of you. No, you listen here. Now that I think about it, we would have gotten away with enough jewels to pay our boss. And I have half the mind to- Enough! <laughs> How'd you make Marv so tiny? Simply a precautionary measure. When a genie becomes irritated, poor decisions can be made. How are we supposed to rob a bank if I'm still only one foot nothing? Well, you should turn him back. I don't want to step on him. Very well. My God, please don't do that ever again. Your friends seemed amused. Isn't that right, Ernie? I'm not gonna lie, Marv. This genie's pretty funny. Whatever. Now about the money. I have a bank heist in the works. Sounds dangerous. Of course it's dangerous, you fool. But the plan itself is bulletproof. I'll catch both of you up later tonight when we meet to scope out the bank. Okay. okay. Oh, and one more thing, Jenny. I don't want no interfering with this plan. If we need your help, we'll make it very, very apparent to you. Is that clear? Very clear, yes. All right, rest up. We head out tonight. On top of a building late at night, Marvin and Ernie scoped out the bank from across the busy street. Which one's the bank again? It's the one right across the street. How many times do I have to point it out? Looks tough. 
I never did rob a bank before either. This would be easier with Jenny. Well, this is going to go a whole lot better than the last time we tried something new. Besides, I don't need no genie. I'm much smarter than that. Don't you have any faith in me, Ernie? No, no, I do. Great, then let's figure out a way to get inside the bank and then in the vault. If my boys are right, there's a heap of gold in there. We don't have a plan to get into the vault? You do now. Best of luck to you both. <laughs> the smoke never gets any better. But look, Marv, we're in. That darn genie. I can't believe she's back. I told her we didn't need any help no more. She did help us get in the vault. Besides, look at all this gold. You were right. Of course I was. Am I ever wrong? Uh, you gotta stop scaring us like that. You could not have done it without my help, of course. Calm down, Marvin. Don't tell me what to do. Ernie, start bagging this gold up. That's why I brought you along. Okay, Marv. This bag is getting too heavy, Marv. Hey, Jenny, is there a way to make this easier? No, Ernie, wait! Certainly. Wow, this is a lot lighter. What did you do to the gold? Nothing unordinary. Change it to a much lighter and familiar material. You now have a sack full of a genie's favorite material, brass. This is worthless. I want this genie gone. Let's get out of here, Ernie. As you wish. Cops! What are we gonna do? I don't wanna go to jail. I don't know about you, but I'm getting the heck out of here. Every man for himself. Fair enough. Huh? Where'd you two go? Stop right there. Yeah, stop right there, punk. Hey, stop stealing my lines. Sorry, sir. Wait a minute. Isn't this the guy from the graveyard? It sure looks like it. Except his dumb friend isn't here this time. You're coming with us. <sighs> oh, of course I am. Great. Book him, officer. Will do, boss. Never trust a genie. I never thought we would have ended up on this island, Jenny. It's peaceful, isn't it? So, Marv's gonna be okay then? Yes. Why isn't he here with us? He found a job in the county prison. Quite exclusive. He seems to enjoy it. That's good. Marv never seemed like no working type, though. Oh, you'd be surprised. He fits in perfectly. He has an entire room all to himself. Well, that's good. I still wish he was here, though. You've already used up all of your wishes, my dear friend. I didn't know that was part of the deal. Unfortunately, it is. So what now? Marv's gone. So I guess I'm stuck on this island for a while? That is entirely up to you. I have fulfilled my purpose in this state of New York, as they say. I've heard Japan is nice this time of year. I think I will travel. That's fun. It'd be nice to travel. Well, technically, there's no rule in my code against bringing along a companion. So can I tag along? Certainly. Come along, Ernie. This will be the trip of a lifetime.
Jenny and Ernie ended up without any money but safe from harm. Nobody expected this unlikely pair to end up safe in the end, but Jenny saw the good inside of Ernie. Because of this, Jenny was grateful to have him by her side.